All right, we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange talking markets with Jim Cramer. Jim, let's start with Apple's developer conference from yesterday. Look, I, I think that this uh, Apple device, which is priced above the uh, Echo, will be a big seller. Because what people don't realize in the uh, press, and people don't realize, I think, in the technology cover Apple, is brand loyalty. And brand loyalty is something that Tim Cook has always stressed. And if Apple puts out a device, people feel they wouldn't put out a device unless they thought it was superior to everything else. And, and uh, if the sound quality is the issue, which is what I care about. I have the Echo, I have the Harman Kardon, I have the Logitech. Uh, you know what? I want this. If the if people start talking about the sound quality being great, I even was involved with a Pono venture uh, with Neil Young on, uh, on um, one of these startup uh, it, startup sites. Why? Because like I care tremendously about sound, mm. and if the sounds great, I want it. Now I don't think I'm alone. All right, let's also talk about FANG stocks. I mean, just surging here. Yeah, I mean, then I saw someone on my Twitter feed saying that they're exhausted. I, you know, when I read that, I think to myself. How many times have I heard they're exhausted? How many times? Now, the stocks that are really flying, I mean, Google's flying, uh, Amazon, I don't think these can be stopped right here. I think they've got more, more lift. Facebook's a little stalled. I mean, a, the A is not Apple, but Apple does seem for the moment stalled. Netflix gets a very important note today from Canner saying things are going to go up. NVIDIA, which is, you know, when you go fang, NVIDIA's doing better again. Lamb Research is another one I follow, which uh, makes the capital equipment for, uh, for the NVIDIA's of the world. Uh, all good. I mean, I, do I want the rally to be broader? Of course I do. Has there been periods where it's just all fang? Yes, it has. Have, do you make broad and sweeping generalizations about this? Go right ahead. You sound smart, but you might not be. Well, we love talking fang with you because you coined the term. Uh, well, you know, I came up with it in part because I wanted people in it. Um, someone this weekend came up to me and thanked me for uh, having them buy fang. And then another guy came up and said, I bought fang too. And they were all people who checked in with their kids. And their kids said, yeah, Facebook is what I'm on, well, Instagram and Amazon, obviously, and uh, Netflix, of course, people, uh, I, you know, I have a cord-cutting daughter who you, you has a smart TV. Um, and then uh, Alphabet is what you learn you couldn't be on when you were in school because it's too, uh, too much cheating. So, yeah, I mean, look, the group is good, and, and I, I, there's always someone who wants to slag the group. And go right ahead. I mean, the group is not expensive, except for Amazon. All right, let's move on to GM, the shareholder meeting. Shareholders were vote on the Einhorn plan. Yeah, uh, you know, that is, um, that was a stupid plan. Um, you're not supposed to ever criticize a hedge fund manager for doing something stupid, but they're like everybody else. Sometimes they do stupid things. That idea of splitting off those two streams when it's peak autos, Doug Cass write about peak autos, would be um, it, it, it just the ultimate in, uh, in recklessness, given what we've seen about auto cycles over time. So that was painful, and I'm glad it's behind them. They apparently, it was more than 90% voted against Einhorn. It's, it's one of those things where uh, Einhorn should, um, you know, when you criticize Einhorn, he comes after you. So I don't know, I don't play for dinner, but it was stupid. Okay, and then CSX approving quite a pay package for its CEO. Look, uh, David Faber's been saying over and over again, this guy has revolutionized the railroad. My writing partner, Matt Horwein, and I have been trying to theorize how much of was, was Michael Ward and he, did he inherit, because I think Michael Ward wasn't a bad manager, but apparently he's directing um, the actual trains, and that ha can have an impact. I don't know. Um, is someone worth it? Well, this stock has been the best performer in the, among the best performers in the S&P. So, uh, yeah, he deserves it. All right, moving to a retail name, J. Crew, uh, Mickey Drexler stepping down. I don't down. think anyone could really have turned around. You know, J. Crew is a, a, an apparel company in the mall, and uh, the mall is dying. Apparel's dying. Now, PVH has managed to transcend that, and they just won some uh, illustrious awards for Calvin Klein for their designer, but PVH's strength is inventory control at the mall and great uh, growth in Europe. Uh, J. Crew did not have that as a backdrop. And by the way, Maywell was doing quite well. I know he wasn't able to blow that out, but you know, I, I, mean, I look at Mickey's situation. I say he said he was overrun by technology, and that's true, but uh, you know, uh, let's see what uh, James Brett does from, from West Elm. But I think that the idea, if you go over the uh, conference calls for uh, Lululemon, a uh, last quarter, not this one. If you go over the last two conference calls for Urban Outfitters and you talk about fashion, I think you would understand exactly the jam that Mickey was in. I, I don't want to judge Mickey too harshly. He's one of the great merchants of our time, 
and I don't think that anyone can really navigate that scenario. Zara's had, Identix has, some, has had some luck in fast supply chain, but look at Ralph Lauren. I mean, Ralph Lauren's a remarkable label, and that's not done well, and uh, I can just, uh, you know, I can tick off all the different apparel companies that are having trouble in the mall. Mickey was just one of them, that's all. All right, and then on Mad Dash on Squawk on the Street, you talked about Thor Industries. Yeah, I mean, Thor missed the quarter last time, and I was reluctant to recommend it. I said it was in the penalty box, and I was willing to miss a better quarter, and they gave you a better quarter, so I missed it. Uh, sometimes that happens. I have to stick by my discipline. But uh, the recreational vehicle numbers are up very big, and uh, the trend looks for real, and uh, if the stock comes in, it will be a buy again. And then on Stop Trading, you talked about Citrix. Yeah, well, since yesterday we had a corporate governor's conference for Street Deal uh, Board X, and uh, the CEO of, of uh, Citrix was talking about how uh, you, had a, you have a tremendous surge in Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is paid, uh, is what the bad guys demand to be paid in when you have a cybersecurity breach. They can't be paid in cash, that's traceable, but Bitcoin's not traceable. So I thought that was a very interesting point. He said the European banks, he did not mention our banks, but the European banks, um, when they're hit by ransomware or European companies, they pay in Bitcoin. So they've always been buying Bitcoin to be ready for the next ransom attack. All right, and Jim, we'll wrap up here with earnings to watch, Brown Foreman. Yeah, you know, I see Constellation Brands as one of the nifty 50, so to speak, going up. And CNBC reported that they may have been in talks with Brown Foreman. Brown Foreman's a family company. I have no idea why Brown Foreman necessarily would want to sell, but family companies occasionally do want to sell. Um, Brown Foreman, you know, they had that Tennessee, they had a couple of new uh, iterations of, uh, of Jack Daniels. The Browns are doing quite well in, in terms of whiskey. Uh, I, I think that Jack Daniels has not moved up enough. Uh, Constellation bought High West, which is a remarkable high end. Uh, I keep waiting for, Jeff, for, for Brown Foreman to, uh, to put out some very high end uh, scotches and whiskeys, uh, rye, bourbon. Maybe they have something, but I would in the meantime tell you I'd rather be in Constellation. Okay, Jim Kramer, thank you so thank much you. as always. And for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.